I hate it. I'd much rather sit at home. I got to win. Doesn't bother me. Doesn't need, I don't need to be here. Leave it to Kyle Busch for a great intro. Welcome in to this week's edition of the Alabama Racer, presented by Green Oil Company, your local VP Racing Fuels distributor. I'm your host, Jim Jacobs, and straight ahead, we've got the Talladega Race Weekend Recap. As we look back on three exciting days of racing, here's what's coming up. We'll cover all three days of racing from Talladega Super Speedway, starting with all the on-track carnage. We'll weigh in with other members of the motorsports media on what we think should be done about it. We've got your winners, including Gus Dean from Friday, Elliot Sadler from Saturday, and Brad Keselowski as he takes home this year's GEICO 500 on Sunday. Of course, rain was an issue at more places around the state than just the Talladega Super Speedway. We'll cover that in the racing calendar. We'll tell you what tracks got their shows in, who the winners were, and what's straight ahead for this weekend. Racing has always been that you know balance of um, daredevils and chess players, and uh, some weekends were chess players, some weekends were daredevils, and this has always been more of the daredevil style of track. All that and more when the Alabama racer takes the green flag next. VP Racing Fuels introduces Maditives, fuel additives developed by the mad scientists. Race fuel technology for your daily driver. VP Racing Fuels and Additives are available at Green Oil Company of Oxford. Aniston Storage is one of the area's finest household and commercial storage facilities. Fenced, well-lit with security cameras, this multi-unit facility can meet all of your short or long-term storage needs. Aniston Storage is safely accessible 24 hours with an electric gate and keypad entry, each unit securely locked to protect your valuables. Sizes available are 10 by 10 up to 10 by 40 feet. We also offer outside storage for boats, campers, trailers, or motorhomes. Find everything you need at our website, AnistonStorage.com. You can even reserve your unit and pay your bill. Aniston Storage, 3100 Red Morris Parkway in Aniston. Spring is finally here. If you're looking for a new car, truck, or SUV, or just want something more dependable that's affordable to drive, then come see us at Avery Auto Sales of Aniston, 410 South Winchard Avenue, home of certified cars, trucks, and SUVs. Don't pay high new car prices. Come see us at Avery Auto Sales in Oxford on Highway 78. We even can offer an additional 100,000 mile certified warranty. And yes, we can get you financed even if you have poor credit. Spring into Avery Auto Sales on Highway 78 in Oxford and our new location on Quintard in Anniston. Welcome back to the Alabama Racer. Let's get right to our Talladega recap, beginning with Friday, a day pretty much designated to the Arca Series for on-track activities. And they got the speedway bright and early. Green flag in the air just a little after 8.30 on the morning's only practice session for the ARCA cars. The session for 90 minutes or so was dominated by Gus Dean, who turned in the quickest time of the day to uh, kind of win the practice honors. When the teams rolled back into the garage area after practice, we were there for, for some reaction from some of the top runners. When you first get out there, it's like, man, this place is big. It's over two and a half miles. So I tested back in January at Daytona and I got the feel for it, but it's still, when you get back out there, it's like, man. And when you run that first lap and you're up by the wall, it's, it's a little bit hectic, but I think we're all good there. I'm just ready for the qualifying and the race. Um, you know, we, we didn't really get the run we were hoping for in Daytona, obviously, um, but we, we had a fast car and I had a great time with the guys at MNM. Um, so when we found out we were going to get the opportunity to come back and, and be able to come back at a super speedway, we were, we were just ecstatic. We, we have been ever since. Um, you know, it's, it's a real honor to be able to work with these guys. They're a top-notch team um, through and through from start to finish. So really excited to be here. It's nice not to have to go and just uh, make a couple laps and, and go to the house, you know. So uh, I'm excited about it. I'm excited for SO Contracting E3 be back on the car. We've got our Chevy back out here, and uh, it's pretty good. Now, once the practice session was over for the day, the teams had roughly four and a half hours before the next scheduled on-track activity, qualifying at 2.30. They were very busy getting ready for the race, preparing for qualifying, of course, and getting back through ARCA inspection yet another time. When the qualifying session did get underway around 2.30, they did so in packs of five cars each. And when it was all over with, to no one's surprise, it was one of those lightning fast Venturini Toyotas that earned the pole, and that belonged to Tom Hessert. 
And Tom, for the past few years, you've had pretty fast cars here. You must be feeling the trend is continuing with this one. Yeah, I, I sure hope so. Like you said, we've been good here in the past, 1-1, one, one, and we lost a few too. But, um, you know, this week our Venturing Motorsports, Relax Wraps, Kometic Gasket, Toyota's been really strong. So, um, you know, looking forward to having a good day. Hessert's lap of a little over 186 miles an hour put him on the pole. He was joined on the front row for Gus Dean for the race when it took the green flag just a little after 5 o'clock Friday afternoon. And boy, what an exciting race it was. On the outside, Kurzievsky, then it's Mark Thompson in the Phoenix Air, number 66. Down to the inside, Terry Jones, and they are jostling all around as it's four wide, three rows deep. Absolutely awesome job as these guys are two by two, nine rows deep as the closing laps of the General Tire 200. Arrow hard contact into the wall, the number 14 of Dustin Knowles really slams into the wall. Another car, two cars involved. Gerhard is junk. So the yellow flag is going to come out here and the ARC officials are saying to us, because of impending darkness, they are going to throw the checkered flag here. ARCA officials took their time, reviewed all of the video footage, and as you can see right here, when the caution light came on, Gus Dean had just nudged ahead of Josh Williams to claim the Talladega General Tire 200. I mean, the car was obviously a top-notch car all day long. Um, it got really hairy there towards the end. Um, made sense those guys made an excellent pit strategy. Um, still getting used to this stuff. <laughs> um, they made an excellent pit call, um, and it really played out for us. We were able to come back through the field. Um, and, and, man, the guys, the, the guys just did an awesome job on pit road. Got us in, got us out. Uh, it just all played out for us, and uh, we worked the draft right. Had an awesome spider, spotter up top, Tyler Green. Um, and, man, we... Couldn't have done it without Greek cooling products and cab installers, man. They, they gave me my second chance, and, and we came back to do it. After the race, we were back in the garage area for reaction from some of the other top finishers. Gus Dean is the big winner of the General Tire 200. And there were some pretty good finishes for other drivers all across the board. Chase Briscoe coming in third, Josh Williams in second. And just like the Beatles said, you can get by with a little help from your friends. And on a track where drafting is so important, that's what a lot of these drivers had to do throughout the race. The biggest thing is is finding somebody who, who will stick with you, you know, stay committed to you and won't, won't hang you out and drop you all the way to the back. So uh, we found a couple of them, you know, 77, he helped us out there right there at the end. Um, you know, Will, the 32 car, they helped us out big time. So, uh, you know, thanks to all them guys and, uh, you know, it's just a really good race. We were running good with the 25 and a few other cars. Um, you know, it's, I always try to race people the way I'd want to be raced. Um, and, and, you know, we, we didn't make a lot of contact out there um, and, and so, you know, people could trust me, I think, when they were around me. Um, you know, even though I am a rookie, uh, and it's on my second super speedway race, um, it felt to me that they felt comfortable around me, and that, that really meant a lot to me um, and allowed me to get in the draft and work it and, and learn a lot. We, we tried some stuff at the beginning of the race. It didn't work, but, uh, you know, SO contracting, E3 spark plug Chevy, it, it was fast, man. It, uh, it When it got in the middle air, it, it really went, and uh, Chase worked out great, you know. we. Uh, we trust each other, and I knew he would be there when, when I needed him to shove, and, and he was. And at the end of the race, you know, um, unfortunately, we had the, the last flag falling as a caution, but it was going to get really interesting because uh, with us two hooked up like out on the bottom, it was going to be really good. We kind of had a plan going into it, you know. We, uh, in practice, even at Daytona, we felt like our two cars together just really worked. So uh, it's nice, you know, that Will's, Will's just been such a big help to me. Even at Salem a couple weeks ago, he was really helping me out. And it's uh, pretty cool, you know, two Southern Indiana boys, you know, running up front. So. Uh, yeah, like I said, just uh, we had a game plan going into it and it ended up working out for us. So uh, just luckily and blessed that we didn't wreck the day. It was uh, pretty hairy. Pretty good day for Alabama drivers in the General Tire 200. Brett Holmes in his Super Speedway debut left the Talladega Super Speedway with a top 10 in his pocket. Thomas Moose Prater out of Mobile had one of his best Super Speedway finishes coming home 11th. Not so good for Dustin Knowles. He finished 20th after being involved in the next to last caution of the day. And Joey Jatina came home in 34th place. When we come back, we'll move ahead to day two activities, Saturday at Talladega Super Speedway and the Sparks Energy 300. Boy, it was another thriller. We'll get to that straight ahead when the Alabama Racer continues. Hi, this is Brett Holmes, and you're watching the Alabama Racer. VP Racing Fuels introduces Maditives, fuel additives developed by the mad scientists. Race fuel technology for your daily driver. VP Racing Fuels and Additives are available at Green Oil Company of Oxford. Need a place to keep your tools? 
for a place to get away from the wife. Whatever your needs are, we got a barn or a carport for you. With rent to own options and no credit checks, we can help you take home the right barn or carport today. And with four different locations, we're just a short drive away. So come see us in Glencoe, Moody, Asheville, or Atala, and let our family help your family get the barn or carport you deserve. The tire, arguably the most important part of a car. Without it, we could not stop, we could not go, we couldn't drive at all. They come in all sizes, brands, treads, prices, and ratings. How do you know which is the right tire for you? Thankfully, there's Cobb Automotive, and they have been answering this question since 1981. With a large selection of brands and sizes in stock, you are sure to get the right tire for the right price. Cobb Automotive, located on Highway 21 across from Walmart in Oxford, and 2001 Quintard Avenue in Anniston. Welcome back to the Alabama Racer, our Talladega Super Speedway Weekend Recap Edition. I'm your host, Jim Jacobs. Let's move to Saturday. The fans that arrived at the track that morning, of course, were greeted by plenty of blue skies and lots of sunshine after the overnight thunderstorms had hit the area. First on the track, the Xfinity Series for qualifying for the Sparks Energy 300, and young Matt Tift put the number 18 NOS Energy Drink Toyota on the front row for Joe Gibbs Racing. He, of course, qualified for the pole. After the Xfinity Series was finished with qualifying, it was the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series team's turns to take time on the speedway. And to no one's surprise, Chase Elliott, the pole setter for the Daytona 500, repeated that feat. And he, of course, earned the P1 position for Sunday's GEICO 500. After qualifying was over, a short break before pre-race festivities got underway, and then it was the Sparks Energy 300, and to kind of coin a phrase, there were sparks everywhere in this one. Here's the race recap. The NASCAR Xfinity Series was back at it again this time at Talladega Super Speedway for the Sparks Energy 300, and rookie Matt Tiff would lead the field to green. Sit back and enjoy 300 miles for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. On lap seven, some drama would unfold early as Brendan Gaughan and Eric Almirola get called for a pass-through penalty for locking bumpers. They both end up going a lap down, but Gaughan gets the free pass shortly after that during the competition caution. A little later in the race, the yellow flag flies when Chris Cockrum and Joey Gase get together. Watch these two cars dart to the inside of the track. They hit the inside wall. Luckily, that's covered in safer barrier both drivers were checked and released from the infield care center. Lap 84, Ryan Reed, who had a fast car all day long, gets turned by Eric Jones. Reed isn't able to save this. He hits the outside wall, and the 16 suffers some right rear damage to that back quarter panel. Under the ensuing caution, the 22 of Joey Logano gets called down pit road to repair a roof rail, and one of the faster cars all day had to restart the race from the back of the pack but Joey wouldn't be slowed down by the incident. He and Elliott Sadler jump out front on the final restart. He's getting a great push by Jeremy Clemens. And racing to the checkered flag, Logano gets turned. He goes into the wall, Sadler goes low. Brennan Poole actually is the first car to the finish line, but NASCAR throws the caution at the time of the wreck that freezes the field, and after several minutes of review, Elliott Sadler is deemed your winner of the Sparks Energy 300 on his birthday, no less, and the 41-year-old locks himself into the NASCAR Xfinity Series chase. Following the winter celebration by Junior Motorsports and Elliott Sadler in Gatorade Victory Lane, here's some post-race comments from the car owner and the winning driver. Yeah, that was a wild race. I. Um... You know, I, I was I was happy f about the, you know, how good the race was. Um, had a debris caution there with about 10 laps to go that I don't think anybody wanted, but because um, it was so good. Uh, those guys are really uh, mixing it up out there, a lot of pushing and stuff at the end, but you kind of see that at all the plate races. Elliot uh, has had a bit of a drought and has struggled to see the results that he uh, thinks he's capable of seeing. And when we got together over the off season, this is exactly what we envisioned uh, for us to be able to do. So I was uh, I was excited for him to get the win, and um, I know he's worked real hard to get get this opportunity. And we're trying to do the best we can to give him the best stuff. So 
holy cow, so many emotions and stories and things going through my head right now. So many different uh, reasons why we wanted to win the race today. But these are the biggest two right here beside me, and this is why I wanted to bring them. It's, uh, you know, they don't get to come to a lot of races, and um, they definitely hadn't been to Victory Lane yet with Daddy. Uh, Wyatt was with me at Pocono on a one in the truck a long time ago, but he was only a couple months old. So to see my kids in Victory Lane with me and my wife was uh, – very special, very emotional, and uh, some I'll never forget. I'm going to be honest with you. There's a lot of races I probably have not done a good job as a driver, but I feel like saving that car today through the grass was kind of crazy. And, yeah, it was a little bit of luck, but I was wheeling it inside of it too. So it felt good to, after Joey and I hit to kind of keep the car straight. And when he yelled caution was out, I felt like I was still uh, in the lead. So that's why we drove up to the start finish line. I'm, I'm glad NASCAR took their time and looked at it. And, uh was kind of just anxious sitting there on the start finish line just man i would really like to win this race and you know i know the 48 car would too but you know he's you know he's going to be around a long time and uh you know we, we felt like we needed it so uh it was a great birthday gift when they started screaming in my ear i kind of knew what was going to happen congratulations to elliot sadler he truly is one of the sports nicest guys we've got to duck in for gas and tires real quick but when we come back We'll recap Sunday's Geico 500 and Brad Keselowski's win at Talladega Super Speedway. We'll have the racing calendar and all of this talk over restrictor plate racing following the carnage on the Speedway Sunday. We'll get to all of that when the Alabama racer comes back off pit road. Daffron Auto Salvage in Pell City is where you'll find over 30 acres of automotive salvage, plus a warehouse full of quality parts for almost any need. Just call ahead and tell us what you're looking for. At Daffron Auto Salvage, you'll find it all. Engine parts, transmissions, rear ends, radiators, suspension, body parts, auto glass, even tires and wheels. You'll also get fast, friendly service. It's been that way since 1965. Don't pay too much for parts. Think used first. Daffron Auto Salvage, 793 Old Cold City Road in Pell City. Waking up to smells of burnt rubber, smoldering campfire, and barbecue sauce. I was there. Cheering on the drivers you love and booing the ones you don't while watching them battle the baddest track in NASCAR. You can bet I was there. Escape reality for a weekend at Talladega. Experience the Geico 500 April 29th through May 1st. For tickets, call 877-GO-TO-DEGA. This is more than a race. This is Talladega. VP Racing Fuels introduces Maditives, fuel additives developed by the mad scientists. Race fuel technology for your daily driver. VP Racing Fuels and Additives are available at Green Oil Company of Oxford. Welcome back in to the Alabama Racer. Before we get to some more high-speed racing action in the Geico 500 from Sunday, let's check out this week's racing calendar. Some tracks around the state fell victim to rain, while others raced against it over the weekend. Montgomery Motor Speedway was in the spotlight Saturday night with 36 Pro late models towed in for rounds two and three of the Show Me the Money Twin 50s. Action was stellar in all divisions, but the pro late models were in the spotlight. Two-time Daytona 500 champion Sterling Marlin and pro late model veteran Augie Gill topped the field in qualifying. Justin South took the first 50 lapper of the evening, while Casey Roderick took the checkers in the second pro late model feature of the night. Other winners Saturday in Montgomery included Dave Mater III in late model, Charles Davis in street stock, and David Davis, a first-time winner in the modified minis. Montgomery Motor Speedway will be back in action on May the 14th with super trucks in action plus the late model sportsman competing for 64 laps in honor of the track's 64th year of operation. Street stocks will also be on the card. The Show Me the Money Pro late models will return to the track for the Memorial Day weekend in a 100-lap shootout. East Alabama Motor Speedway was one of those tracks racing the rain down in Phoenix City this past Saturday. A great night of racing wasn't delayed by a short two-minute sprinkle just before hot laps. This week, they raced Friday night in a special Salute to Mom edition at EAMS. See a full slate of racing action. The grandstands will open at 6 and racing at 8 o'clock. Admission is just $12 for adults, $10 for moms. Kids 12 and under are admitted free. Congratulations to last week's winners at EAMS. Newlywed Montana Dudley in late model. Bubba Gorman in limited late model. Jason Price in hobby. 
Derek Schreschenjost in street stock. Billy Duell Jr. gets his third in a row in the Road Warrior class. And Tony Newman in the Hot Shots. At Huntsville Speedway, Mother Nature was the only one visiting Victory Lane with the night's action called long before anybody arrived. They'll try again this Saturday night with gates opening at 5 o'clock, qualifying at 6 in the first green flag of the evening in the air at 7. Admission is $10 for adults, $5 children ages 7 to 12, and kids 6 and under are admitted free. Mother Nature won also Friday night at Talladega Short Track, washing out one of the two nights of scheduled activities for the big race weekend. This weekend, the go-karts return to Friday night racing at Talladega Raceway Park with all kart, junior, and mini late models in action. Grandstand admission is free. Talladega Short Track roars back to life Saturday with another weekly racing program in all divisions, including a hot shot shootout. The gates open at 5 with racing at 8 o'clock. Admission is just $10 with kids 9 and under admitted free. Congratulations to last Saturday's winners at TST. Jason Hyatt smoked the field in the Southern All-Stars late model feature, leading flag to flag, while Michael Page won in the Naismith Crate late model touring division. It was Chris Farrell in Sportsman, Scott McGuirk in Thundercar, Steve Pate won again in Street Stock, and Josh McBride in the Hot Shots. Racing at Shelby County Speedway in Wilsonville was canceled this past Saturday. They'll try again this week with a special tribute to Alan Rat Rivas. The gates open at 5 and hot laps get underway at 6.30. Now, if you don't see your track on the show, it is only because we don't have your information. Send your weekly racing results, including upcoming events and photos and videos to us via email at thealabamaracer at fnnnetwork.com. The deadline to be on each week's show is 12 noon on Tuesdays. And as promised in the coming weeks, look for us to expand the racing calendar to include several dragways across the state. There is no doubt that rain plagues Sunday's GEICO 500 more so than any of the other scheduled on-track activities for the weekend at Talladega Super Speedway. The racing was intense from the drop of the green flag on the GEICO 500 as teams were first trying to get to the halfway point to make the race official and then after that was accomplished making it all the way to the checkered flag to avoid a long multi-hour track drying process that it takes at Talladega. Let's get right to the race highlights for this year's GEICO 500. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series was on track at Talladega Super Speedway a little early due to impending rain, but the green flag flew and pole sitter Chase Elliott leads the field to green in the GEICO 500. The yellow flag flew on lap 49 as Dale Jr. gets loose and collects the five of Casey Kane and Matt DiBenedetto. The incident looked identical to the accident that took Dale out of the Daytona 500, and the car that Dale Jr. won this race in last year, the one that he named Amelia, would be taken behind the wall along with the five car. Under that caution, the highly anticipated driver swap between Tony Stewart and Ty Dillon took place. Smoke hopped out of the car, Ty Dillon jumped in, and the 14 team hooked all of those hoses and tightened his belts and Ty Dillon would rejoin the race in 33rd place. 59 laps in, Martin Truex Jr. gets into the back of his former owner, Michael Waltrip. Waltrip gets shoved down onto the apron of the racetrack. He comes back up and collects the 13 of Casey Mears. Eric Almarola also goes for a spin, but Waltrip ends up collecting his car, keeps it off of the wall. Mears, however, would suffer damage and would have to go behind the wall for repairs. Just past halfway, the yellow comes out when Austin Dillon gets into the wall. Watch Jimmy Johnson go around here. The 34 car flips down the backstretch. Luckily, all of the safety equipment does its job, and the rookie was able to climb out of the car under his own power. On lap 110, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s bad day gets worse. Carl Edwards has a problem on the right front, and Jr. was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Both cars were destroyed in the accident, but both drivers walked away and were checked and released from the infield care center. After the race restarted, it was discovered that Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s wheel came off earlier in the race. Take a look at the in-car camera here as he gets the wheel back on and continues in the race before that lap 110 crash took him out. 
Lap 160, we see the big one when Jimmy Johnson gets turned into the wall. He goes off the nose of Kurt Busch's car, but several good cars get caught up in the aftermath, including Martin Truex Jr., Paul Menard, Ryan Blaney, Ricky Stenhouse, and many more. Fast forward 21 laps, and we saw the big one, part two. Michael McDowell gets into the back of Danica Patrick. She clips Matt Kenseth. Kenseth goes airborne, slides on the roof of that car. He did get back on his wheels. Luckily, all drivers walked away from the accident, but several good cars were taken out, including Joey Logano, and Kevin Harvick got a little piece of that action during that wreck. On the final restart, Brad Keselowski jumps out in front in the two. He holds off the field to get the win as they crash behind him coming to the checkered flag. The two car earns its second win of the year in the Geico 500. Hey, we've got to duck in for gas and tires quickly, kind of losing the handle on it a little bit. But when we come back, we'll head to the Ken Patterson Infield Media Center to hear from the top three finishers from Sunday's race. And hey, what's all this about? Plus, yes, we're going to get into restrictor plate racing. All of that is straight ahead as the Alabama racer continues next. Can't wait to get out of this place. VP Racing Fuels introduces Maditives, fuel additives developed by the mad scientists. Race fuel technology for your daily driver. VP Racing Fuels and Additives are available at Green Oil Company of Oxford. We build things that work the way you wish they would. Like a front end loader you can detach from your seat. Or a mower deck you just drive over cut through knee-deep grass no problem. Yep, we thought the same thing you did. That's why we build them this way. That's how we run. Nothing runs like a deer. Waking up to smells of burnt rubber, smoldering campfire, and barbecue sauce. I was there. Cheering on the drivers you love and booing the ones you don't while watching them battle the baddest track in NASCAR. You can bet I was there. Escape reality for a weekend at Talladega. Experience the Geico 500 April 29th through May 1st. For tickets, call 877-GO-TO-DEGA. This is more than a race. This is Talladega. Welcome back to the Alabama Racer. Thanks so much for tuning in again this week. We really appreciate it. Well, as you can imagine, after the Geico 500, there were drivers that had plenty of things to say about the event Sunday at Talladega Super Speedway. Let's go over to the Ken Patterson Infield Media Center, where we'll hear from the top three finishers, Austin Dillon, Kyle Busch, and race winner Brad Keselowski on their day and their thoughts on the plate racing at Talladega. There was a little bit of everything. It started out pretty good, running up front and moving around, chasing guys, and um, man, we had a fast car. Our Dallin Telefresh car was fast, and um, we um, got in that early wreck. Uh, we were four wide there with Jamie, and didn't work out. Uh, so I'm just proud of my guys, the Dallin Telefresh guys. Their shirts are probably working perfect today. They're, they're supposed to keep you smelling good, and they worked their butts off. They had 15 stops. If you guys can see the car, if you go look at it, you would never expect it to get the third. I actually think um, with it being so draggy and beat up, the one car hooked to us at the end, and he just pushed me all the way through three and four and gave us a heck of a run. And once I left that air, though, there was not much I was going to be able to do once uh, that guy happened. So I knew it was my last shot off of turn four, and we just tried it. It was, it was, uh, it was fun to be up there at the end. I've been asked a couple times already what I think they should do, and truthfully, I'm not an arrow guy, but... Um, I know with the smart people we have in NASCAR and all the, the companies that we can probably do something to, um, to figure it out, and we need to. I mean, I went flying last year at Daytona, and that's not fun. For guys that haven't done it, it's just not a fun, fun thing to be a part of. And um, I don't know how to fix it personally, but I know NASCAR will put their efforts toward fixing it. Uh, I know they will. They've, they've made the car safer, and that's a uh, reason why these guys are we're, we're walking away from these crashes. And... Uh, I think uh, as a group, all of us want it to be to be where we're not leaving the ground. So um, we'll we'll get some smart people on it, and I have total faith in NASCAR that they'll do their job and and work on that. Um, but man, wild day! Had some decent speed and um, had a decent car, so just uh, lucky, I guess, to come home with a top five finish and be in second. So you know, our Skittles Camry was was fast but um you know just wasn't in the right time at the right places some of those times um and then you know brad 
being out front and not having a whole lot of formation behind me never really got my got myself a, enough momentum in order to get up to him or at least to try to make a move on him. He was just so far out protecting his lane that uh, race was race was pretty much his. So um, that's about it. Um, you know, it's just Talladega. It just is what it is. And in, in these cars, you try to get a little bit aggressive and start bumping people and pushing people, and they're real easy to get out of control. And uh, I don't. I really don't know why we're we're bumping and pushing and everything else because these cars they go slower when you push so <laughs> makes a whole lot of sense um, but that's how stupid we are about everybody had some sort of damage and was tore up so I don't I don't think there's a car that that came out of this place with uh, without needing the body re all redone and all the time and effort that the guys do at the shop rebuilding it what can you say Talladega has been good to me and it's uh, it's great to be back on this podium uh, as a race winner I'm very very proud and, and thrilled for a day today. You never know what you're going to get here. Talladega has always been that way, uh, but it's been very good to me, and uh, I'm, you know, like I said, thankful uh, for that uh, crazy day. <laughs> Somehow we managed to stay ahead of or out of all the chaos. You know, I hated to hear about cars flipping and doing all those things, and nobody wants that. Uh, but I think, you know, some accidents here and there, we might not like to cheer about it, but it is part of the sport, and it always has been part of automobile racing. Racing has always been that, you know, balance of um, daredevils and chess players. And uh, some weekends were chess players, some weekends were daredevils. And this has always been more of the daredevil style of track, um, which probably offsets some of the tracks that we go to that, you know, we're, you know, maybe kind of the lame chess player. I think it takes a balance of that. And that's what makes an NASCAR season so much fun and so unique. We don't want cars to go in there. There's never a guarantee of where they're going to land. And we don't want them to land in a fan's lap. I'm a capitalist. I love capitalism. There's people still paying to sit in the stands, and there's sponsors still on the cars, drivers still willing to get in them. It kind of sounds like it's self-policing, and there's enough interest to keep going. So we'll keep going. Well, we'll see you guys back here in October for what should be more of the same as the Sprint Cup Series Chase for the Championship returns to Alabama. And speaking of October, earlier this week, NASCAR released their 2017 Sprint Cup Series schedule. And of note, Talladega's October event flip-flops with Kansas next year, moving Talladega's race one race further or deeper into the chase schedule for the 2017 season. Drivers seem to be happy that Talladega wasn't going to be the last race in one of the chase segments to determine who advances on for a chance to race for the championship at Homestead. Now it moves into that first race in a segment slot in 2017. Well, what's going on with Matt Kenseth and Joy Logano? Yep, they're at it again. Boy, I tell you, there is bad blood between these two, and for anybody that thinks this is going away anytime soon, you're dreaming. Matt Kenseth was upset once again with Logano after the events at Talladega on Sunday. Kenseth felt like Logano moved him below the yellow line earlier in the race, causing the 20 car to drop back in the field, basically resulting in the track position that put Matt Kenseth on his lid on the inside of the Alabama Gang Super Stretch next to the Safer Barrier and way up in the air, almost next to the catch fence before the number 20 landed on its wheels and Kenseth, of course, walked away. Kenseth had words for Logano after leaving the infield care center. Logano smirked back at Kenseth and, well, it's on again. I look for more payback. Speaking of payback, well, we're almost to the pay window. The white flag is out and when we come back, I'm gonna tell you what I think about restrictor plate racing and the future of things at Talladega Super Speedway and Daytona as we move forward. We'll talk about who's gonna be on the show next week. We're gonna stop doing a lot of this and do some of this straight line stuff. We're gonna feature some drag racing next week on the show. We'll tell you all about that. When we come back, stay close. VP Racing Fuels introduces Maditives, fuel additives developed by the mad scientists. Race fuel technology for your daily driver. VP Racing Fuels and Additives are available at Green Oil Company of Oxford. We have a 95% customer satisfaction rating. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS, are facing an audit, a lien, or levy, then call me right away. You're in charge with the tax admiral. Call me now for your free emergency consultation. Call 800-218-4908. That's 800-218-4908. Welcome back to the show. It's time for Jim's Two Cents. You know, Talladega Super Speedway is the birthplace of the restrictor plate. 
Nobody will ever forget that hot Sunday summer afternoon back in 1987 when Bobby Allison blew a tire coming through the trioval. The car turned gently sideways and lifted up like an airplane leaving a runway, ripping down a large section of fencing along the front straightaway, sending debris into the stands and, well, you know the rest. NASCAR was lucky that day, but so were we as race fans because if it had turned out differently, well, it would have been devastating to the sport and its future. You know, here's what I can't figure out. Why after a race like Sunday's Geico 500, where there were a few bad wrecks and a car or two ends up upside down, does the national motorsports media decide that it's time to castrate Talladega Super Speedway once again? You know, one of them even had the nerve to suggest that we put a road course back inside the track, roll down the banking sum, and, well, a bunch of other crazy things. It just absolutely makes no sense. Well, here's what I think. Pack racing puts butts in those seats. You mess with that, you're going to have a lot more empty spots showing up at tracks like Daytona and Talladega on Sunday afternoons. Safety has to come first. We all understand that. Nobody wants race cars flying in the air and possibly getting into the stands or in the infield where the fans are. But the product has to be a close second. Didn't we get what we wanted in the finish of the Daytona 500 from a restrictor plate race? It was great. We all loved it. It's my opinion that with the cars getting in the air, they're going too fast. It's time for NASCAR to roll them back in the 188 to 192 mile per hour range, and I think we'll have a lot less race cars flipping up in the air when they get sideways. Now, does that take the possibility of something bad happening, like a driver getting injured in a wreck? Well, of course it doesn't, but that's racing, folks. It's always been that way, long before we ever built Talladega Super Speedway. Well, thanks a lot for joining us on the show this week. Don't forget you can tune in every Thursday at 8 p.m. at FNNnetwork.com. And if you can't watch us then, well, make sure you subscribe to our FNN channel on YouTube. You'll receive email notices of when we upload shows so that you can watch them on demand whenever you'd like. They're all always going to be right there anytime you want to watch the Alabama Racer. Have a great week. We'll see you next Thursday. And remember, if you're not first, you're last. VP Racing Fuels introduces Maditives, fuel additives developed by the mad scientists. Race fuel technology for your daily driver. VP Racing Fuels and Additives are available at Green Oil Company of Oxford.